to Satan, it is written. It is written. It is written in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, 7, and 10. And this same chapter goes on to say, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We know this from verse 4. But the Bible is very specific about how it teaches that all scripture is God breathed. Second Timothy verse 316 is a tremendous book that speaks about how we are to rely on and trust the source of what we are seeking to find by way of the truth. And so we come to know that when Jesus was pushed to the brink, he found victory by relying upon the divine inspiration of God's word. The word of God is the Christian source of life and power. Let me just pause for a moment and just give you a little bit of context why this chapter is so important. Evangelism, like discipleship, is a process rather than an event. It involves preparing the soil of the heart, planting the seed of God's word, cultivating spiritual interests, harvesting decisions for Christ, and preserving the harvest with ongoing discipleship. Brothers and sisters, this is why this chapter is brilliant. And so we go on to just consider, as I just pause and just give you some depth to this chapter, what areas do we need to work on? And so the, the weakest area in our evangelism work tends to be in cultivation, giving Bible studies, and preservation, discipleship and training. And these are the longest phases of the evangelistic and discipleship process, and they require quite a lot of personal effort, something that we could all commit to. Amen. And so it is my prayer that we need a reformation in these areas. If you look at what Ellen G. White says, she said the key to today's message is the source of spirit and life, is the sustaining power of the word. And so she goes on to say that the plan of giving Bible readings, which is the old name for Bible studies, was a heaven-born idea. And so she saw a mighty reformation and vision in which hundreds of thousands of Seventh-day Adventists were giving Bible studies. And simple as it sounds, perhaps our greatest potential for growth in the church is to increase the personal Bible studies being given by pastors and us as church members. And this is really the heart of this book that we are reading over the next 26 weeks or so. As we prepare and plan for mission and service. So brothers and sisters, as I share with you, I'm going to just cover some practical areas which I believe will help you in the process to get ourselves organized to get into the discipleship book. And so the basic approach to your Bible readings is what does the passage say? What does it tell us about Jesus or God? So that's the what. And then we have the so what. What is or why is the passage relevant or important? And is the passage convicting myself of a sin or something that I have hidden? 
Now, I've just taken my time to just let you pause and just digest how these questions reflect in the method that we are going to try and use throughout our Discipleship Handbook series. Now, what is the last part of the method? And this question is quite important. Is the passage describing some change that God wants me to make in my life? Is there a promise in this passage I can claim? The thing is, which I want to stress this evening, is that you can't replace a cultivation or harvest activity, Bible studies or evangelism, with a soil preparation activity and expect to succeed in evangelism or discipleship, we need every phase of the GROW cycle. Some of you new members will start to hear us referring to the GROW cycle here and there, but as we go through the discipleship handbook, it will become clearer and will make sense. So as I turn now to the devotional life, let me just say these key words for you this evening. We must make daily Bible reading a spiritual habit in our lives. I'll just quote from the book, and I have the book in my hand this evening, and I'll just take a few moments to read from the book to give you a little bit of perspective of why this chapter is a fantastic way to start the first series of our devotions to the Discipleship Handbook. Daily Bible reading, along with daily personal prayer, is preferred to as the devotional life, because we must be devoted to it. It takes a commitment. It's not an option for us as Christians, because without it, our eternal destiny is on shaky ground. Amen. And so I'm not going to belabor the point, but I'm going to keep it short and sweet. We may go to church, be kind to others, and give to the poor, but without regular time in God's word, there will be a decay of spiritual life. So, brothers and sisters, be absolutely committed to a plan to have a regular devotional life in the Word, studying the Word, coming to God in prayer, getting on your knees, even if you feel tired and you feel that you find a, an, an opportunity that it's just on your mind and burns you, that I have to pray and study then take the time to do it. As I turn to the next slide, I'm now going to share with you a practical application. A commitment to spend 30 minutes a day in prayer and study. The Bible, as I'm reading from this book, the Discipleship Handbook, says that all scripture is God-breathed. 2 Timothy 3.16. But just as God breathed into Adam to give him life, so when we read God breathe scripture every morning, it gives spiritual life to the soul. In the back of this discipleship handbook is a reading plan, and I might just mention that Karen will post the link on chat for those of you who need to just click into the link and it will take you to the reading plan. Brothers and sisters, make a personal commitment to spend at least 30 minutes a day in prayer and study. When we make a devotional life a priority in our lives, we find that his words are spirit and they our life. This is all linked back to the chapter that we are reading 
and sharing with you this evening. Let me just quote for you something that I find very, very motivational. And it certainly helps me in my personal walk with Jesus. After his resurrection, Jesus explained the scriptures to two disciples along the road to Emmaus. They later said, did not our heart burn within us while we talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? Luke chapter 24, verse 32. What a privilege is ours to have a personal devotion with the Lord every day. We can pray for the Holy Spirit each morning before reading the Bible. And then Jesus will open the scriptures to us just as he did to his disciples. And then our hearts will burn within us. So today, it is my request personally to all of you that are listening this evening, uh, before we break to our breakout rooms for a quick discussion, we are inviting you to hold this precious communion with him through the living word of God. As I said to you at the very beginning, of my sharing with you this morning. Chapter two started off with these key words. Jesus didn't just know the scriptures. He depended on them. As I appeal to each and every one of you this evening, this message is the heart of evangelism and discipleship. We prepare and plan for mission and service every day and not everyone goes to cooking school or bible school or a church social before being baptized but everyone needs to be grounded in bible studies and in the word may god bless our east auckland family may god bless all of our members who are online watching and listening to our facebook streaming live and to those of us who are about to go into our little breakout rooms, we have some practical discussions or discussion questions for you. And I'm just going to read them and they will be available in your breakout rooms. Number one, since our spiritual lives comes from the living word, what will be the result of neglecting the daily study of the Bible? Question two. This is a great discussion question. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 2 Timothy 3.16. Discuss the importance of studying the entire Bible and not just some well-known portions. What is the difference, question three, between inspiring writings about the Bible and the inspired writings of the Bible. As I've just mentioned, there is a reading plan at the very back of the discipleship handbook. It is found in section one, and our sister Karen will post on chat this evening the link that will take you directly to your reading plan. And please, as I have just reminded you, take time at least 30 minutes a day to work your way through the reading plan study the word and pray on the word. Thank you. God bless.